Welcome back, my darlings. Uh, now we're doing a bit of scratch repair. So we've seen we did this before, and again, for the same reason, actually, a lease return. Um, there's a few scuffs and scrapes just on the front splitter here. Um, so what I'm gonna do first is wash this down to see the full extent of what we're dealing with and then what will be required to fix it. I've got the uh, repair kit from uh, Paints For You again, so that'll be what the paint I'm using. Um, first off, I'll give a quick spray with some uh, all-purpose cleaner built Hamburg um, Surfex HD at 20 to 1. Then give it a spray with some shampoo. That's all that's really needed for this, like a good um, concentrated shampoo mix in a spray bottle. And then wipe it off and then give it a uh, quick wipe down degrease with uh, isopropanol alcohol mixed with water at about 20%. Um, and then we'll be able to clearly see what we have to deal with. And after I've done that wash phase and we're looking at it, I'll bring you in closer so you can see it. Right, off to the wash then. So this is what we've got. We've got a nice, quite deep scuff gouge here and a few bits of like scuffing along here. A um, little bit here and there's another bit just over here, which I'll spin you around to see. Yeah, so just a bit here, a little bit of rash. The rashing will polish out anyway, although I might put a little bit of paint over the top of them. The heavier stuff I pointed to first. Yeah, this stuff here, um, this is gonna require definitely paint. Um, what I'm going to do, because it's just been returned for um, from release, so we kind of want it to look good, but it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. I'm going to sand it back, smooth it out, level it off a bit, give it a good key, and then I'll apply some paint. And the paint will be done on a different day, I think. But today, right now, it's going to use some wet sand, 1500 grit, just to level it off, get some of those loose bits off that I can see poking around here. Give us a nice, um, good surface to paint onto when we actually come to that. That's flatted back and uh, ready for paint now. I've degreased it. Now, paint's gonna be in a couple of days. Weather forecast isn't looking fantastic at the moment. So um, two or three days, then we're gonna have a run of um, four or five days where it'll be nice and dry. So right now, gonna leave that as it is. When I come back to applying the paint, I'll obviously clean it off again, degrease it again. Um, won't need to flat it back though, hopefully. And uh, yeah, then just get back to uh, touching all the spots in. And then the next phase after that, letting it cure, probably doing a couple of coats, letting it cure for a week or so, um, given the temperatures at the moment. And then flat it back and polish it out, and then we should be good as gold. Ooh, good as new, perhaps. We shall see. So we're back right. again, we're back again to uh, now put the paint on. This is being wiped back down with uh, the IPA mix again. And here I've got a mix of paint and clear coat, about 70% um, paint to about 30% clear. Put you back into time lapse, and now I'm going to fill in all of this with paint. Okay, so now the now the paint's been on here for about a week. You can see it's very proud, which is cool. No problems there. It's cured, all good. So what I'm gonna do now is sand this back using a bit of 1500 and then on to uh, 2000 grit to get it nice and smooth. Now, you can see here, hopefully, that this the scratch is pretty sunken in still. That's because the paint is very proud. And once we sand it back, it should all be pretty flush. So let's see. and it's time to polish this out. So what I'm gonna use is uh, a Lake Country light polishing pad on the rotary, this is the spot pad, and I'm gonna use Meguiar's 105. So this is the perfect stuff for getting out um, the sanding marks, but also 
Um, because I'm doing it on a light polishing pad, it means I can finish this down to a finish, uh, to a, an acceptable finish. Whereas if this is if I was using a heavy cutting pad or something like that, you'd probably have to hit it again with a, a lighter pad and maybe some Meguiar's 205. Also, let's say it doesn't come up with the best finish yet. Because it's a light pad and a heavy compound, I won't be using much on this small spot. So what I could do is then, same pad, just put a little bit of 205 on it afterwards and that would that'd be perfectly acceptable and give you a nice good finish as well. Anyway, let's watch this and see what we get to, shall we? see here now it's all polished back out there is still quite a depression and that's to be expected i would say i would this is the deep scratch on here and i was expecting this to happen i need to put more paint into this because this is after an ipa wipe down so there's no fillers or anything here so i need to put some more paint in here and then give it a, another hit in a couple of days time once it's all hardened up and all this but apart from that like the finish is good color matches pretty good too it's not the best color match I've had out of um, paints for you but it's not terrible and it's very hard to see we're obviously right on top of it and I have put your um, exposure up very high just so you can really see the contrast but uh, yeah that's what I'm gonna do next so a bit more paint on that but first I'm gonna go back and look at the other areas right if you're focusing on this bit here now um, I'm gonna wash this back and then give it a light sanding there isn't as much over um, painting here so a little bit of sanding probably go straight in with the uh, 1200 grip and then I will get on with the polisher and polish it out. I'll do all, all of this in time lapse and we can see the result at the end. Oh, I think that looked pretty good, don't you? Very nice, good finish. Um, so now it is on to the bit that is in the front splitter. So as you get your front sill, should we say. So similar approach, squash this off now, um, flat it back where required, and then just took another hit with the uh, MX-105 on the rotary. You're about to see sort of the limitation of a rotary polisher of this size, even with a spot pad. That's why there's been a rise in these machines like the Roops Hybrid Nano and the equivalent Flex, these like micro polishers that are designed for working in small spaces like this. Unfortunately, I haven't found the spare 450 pounds down the back of the sofa yet. All right then, so we polished it, sanded it back, polished it out. There are still some deep bits and divots here. There's always gonna be, these are quite deep scratches. You were about a foot away before, and now you're about three foot away. So they don't look anywhere near as bad as they did. However, they can always look better. So I'm going to put some more paint on these bits. Might as well do the one on the side while I'm at it. And then um, come tomorrow, sand it back a bit more, and then, yeah, polish it out one more time, and we should be there, I think. So that's the plan. Put you into time lapse, and you can watch. appreciate this isn't quite art attack but you know, it's not bad I'm pretty pleased with it um, amazing brushwork there I think you can see definitely better with the uh, with the sanding though I think can't you tell So a lot of this is really done by feel. You can feel that raised paint beneath your thumb uh, and your fingers. And that's why I'm just going over it again and again and again and again until I can feel that it's pretty good. Sometimes you need to wipe it back to visually inspect it as well, which is what I did a bit there. But yeah, you know, it's, it's by eye and by feel. And 
and in saying it's by feel, that it's very easy to feel when you haven't gone far enough. It's not easy to feel when you've gone too far, which is why when it's getting a bit smoother and a bit less obvious beneath your thumb, you do need to inspect it and check it more times. Now I realised this before and after may not be the best shot because you can't really see the scratch, but then that is kind of the point I guess. There we go. That is as good as we need it to be for what it's uh, going to be done for. So the, the whole point of this was getting it ready for um, return to a lease company, hiding a couple of scratches, and we've done it. It looks really good. You can't really see any issues there at all now that you have to be up like, like this to really see. So uh, I'm really pleased with that. Could give it a wash now. That's the next step, uh, a wash, and I'm gonna give it an all over quick polish with uh, built hander cleanser polish. And then uh, yeah, good to go. Being returned on Monday, I think. So there we go. Okay, that's the scratches and stone chips repaired. Now it's on to doing the inside and outside. Neither of which are particularly bad because it's just come back from a dealership wash as it was in for a service. Uh, but yeah, obviously it's not that good, so there'll be plenty of for me to uh, pick up and make look a lot better. Then the real focus is going to be the outside, adding a bit more gloss to the paint. So we're going to use a uh, built hand cleanser polish on a Dash 6 Pro and chemicalized white hex logic pad, which is the light polishing pad. Between those two things, they will bring back a bit of gloss to the paintwork, and the cleanser polish will do some filling of any light swells as well. So it will look really good by the end of it. Got a new Gorilla Pod um, tripod, so it should be giving some good angles on the inside as well. Talking of which, inside is what I'm going to do first, so let's get on with it. This is how I use the Gorilla Pod to get those uh, nice shots you're about to see of the interior. This is a really good example of what the difference in quality is between something like a Seat, a VW, and then the Audi. Yeah, they're all part of the same group. And the carpet quality is not the same though. This stuff is that really tight woven thing. It looks clean for a lot of the time, but it really traps dirt. And it was hard to get the little trap bits of sand and twig out. making use here of the little uh, turbo brush attachment. It's fantastic and stuff like this, um, really just getting into the pile. I'm going to really whiz through this wash process because it wasn't that interesting, the car wasn't that dirty, the wheels didn't need special attention. But giving it a quick snow foam with built hand or auto foam at a 4% PIR, then could go over it and wash it um, with built hand or auto wash in the bucket. And uh, then we're going to slow down again and uh, see a bit of polishing action with the built hand cleanser polish.
as I go around just doing the rinsing off stage here now. Um, something that came up in the comments on the previous video was how was I getting on with the deionized water vessel? Well, it was back out in action today because the car was getting warmer sitting in the sun and I didn't want water spots to appear um, on it even though I was going to polish it a bit later. I should say between this step and the wash step previously I did do a chemical decontamination with built half Corosol and some TARDIS. Uh, I didn't show it because this car, the colour of the paint, didn't really make it visible as, as to the work going on there. But I did that and now I'm just applying the uh, built half cleanser polish as I said. It's a spreading polish, it's not one that you work, it's not one you do sets with. You spread it over the paintwork and then buff off. This segment shows a really good example of what Bill Hamber cleanser polish can do. Keep an eye on the back door. I just do the last couple of bits here and wipe them down. All that's left for me to say is thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it's been a bit informative and you've learned a bit of possibly how you might be able to do some paint repair. And uh, yeah, sit back and enjoy the afters and I will see you in the next video.